CataractCoach.com, FACO Fundamentals Part 5, choosing fluidic parameters for each FACO mode, including sample starting points for sculpt, for chop or quadrant removal, including epinucleus, cortex removal, capsule polishing, and even viscoelastic removal. Let's get started. Looking at FACO fluidics, we've given you the background for how fluidics works, what are the principles behind it, Poisson's equation, everything. But now looking here at the machine, what are we gonna do here? Let me explain you the various settings. So the top half machine in green are gonna be the FACO power. The bottom half in blue are the fluidic settings. So let's first start off with some simple ones. What's PEL? That's patient eye level. And this machine has a light here, and that shows where the patient's eye level should be, and we can adjust that up or down. And that's important for having appropriate fluidics. There's a vacuum rise, which you can imagine is the, the factor for rising of the vacuum. The IOP ramp up in how many seconds? And an irrigation uh, factor. We'll go over those. But let's first look here at the fluidic settings for various modes. So on pre faco we just want to aspirate out some of the anterior cortex. So what should we do here? So we have a relatively modest IOP. Or if you have a different machine, it'd be a bottle height. And here it's about 68 centimeters of water. Vacuum level, just enough to aspirate, so relatively low vacuum and relatively low flow. What are the lines that are here? The lines behind these indicate how we program it. So foot position two, foot position three. So we can start immediately with a vacuum of 130, or I can say, well, let's ramp it up. It can start off lower, we could have it starting here, etc. Now this is grayed out because there's no, on this part we're not really giving any uh, foot position three. So clear that. Here's the vacuum level. Again, we can adjust how much vacuum. So 26 millimeters of mercury here, ramping up to 160 and then staying flat. Aspiration flow, again, we can adjust it. We can start off lower and then ramp up, or we can keep it at a constant amount. So these are reasonable settings for pre -faco. Sculpt, now let's look here. To sculpt the nucleus, this is a more common setting. This is for surgeons who are doing a divide and conquer. Again, we'll ramp up the pressure to about 50 millimeters of infusion pressure millimeters of mercury. That's equivalent to a bottle height of about 68 centimeters. Then a reasonable amount of vacuum and then a little bit of flow as well. That's typical. But when we go to chop, now look how things change. Of course, you see right away we have a lot more vacuum. So we have a lot more holding power. So 425. We can even change some of these settings so we can ramp it up a little bit more, position two. But I want to have high vacuum right off the bat in position two to embed the probe into the nucleus. So we'll leave that. Aspiration flow, here we do want to ramp it up. And so once we get into it and we're taking down the small pieces and chopping them up, it'll flow faster. But when we're just embedding the fake probe at the beginning, we don't need much flow. So that's a very reasonable setting. So those sound good for chop. Epinucleus again, Epinucleus. just vacuum. Lower pressure, a lot less flow in the eye. Cortex. Cortex. Now we have smaller bore instrumentations. What is the tubing size on the IA probe? Well, that's here. It's the same. But how big is the port? The suction port here on the IA probe is very tiny compared to the FACO probe, which is bigger. That's why we have higher vacuum. And we can have high flow but only to a degree less so than in FACO. So here, maybe even being more conservative because we may not get as much flow as we think because the port is small on the IA probe. Polish. Going to polish, again, low flow, low vacuum, nice and gentle. Viscoelastic, what's different here? At the end of the case, we want a lot of current in the eye. 60 cc's a minute going through the eye to flush out all the viscoelastic. If you have a lot of outflow, you need more inflow. So the pressure's gotta go up higher too. And then a high vacuum level, so if we get occluded with some viscoelastic or a nuclear piece or a cortex piece, it'll suck down very quickly. So that's a good overview of the settings that are involved here. 
And remember, for most of my cases, I just use three settings. I do chop, similar settings of these, though not exact, cortex, and then viscoelastic. Now let's look at the settings. So prefaco mode, the purpose is to remove anterior cortical material within the rexus area. So low to moderate infusion pressure, moderate vacuum, moderate aspiration flow. Again, just to remove that anterior cortical material within the rexus area. Now next mode. Sculpt mode is to sculpt a trench or a groove in the nucleus for cracking and stop and chop and divide and conquer technique. So here you need just low infusion pressure, low vacuum. You only need the vacuum and the flow to remove the cataract slurry. So flow is low as well. Next mode we're gonna be looking at is chop mode. So you need to hold the nucleus with high vacuum while the chopper divides and then to phaco aspirate these pieces. So infusion pressure is gonna be high to keep up with the high aspiration outflow and a high vacuum. So high vacuum to hold the nucleus, high flow to phaco aspirate the nuclear pieces. Quadrant mode is very similar to the chop mode. So again, we wanna phaco aspirate nuclear quadrants after they've been chopped or separated. So again, high infusion pressure to match the high outflow of aspiration flow and then a high vacuum level. So high flow to aspirate them and high vacuum to hold the pieces. Epinucleus is to use primarily vacuum to remove that epinuclear shell. So moderate infusion pressure, moderate flow, relatively high vacuum. We need to use the lower flow to avoid aspirating the posterior capsule. We just want to aspirate the epinucleus here. Cortex mode, of course, is high vacuum to strip and remove the lens cortex from the capsule. So we need moderate infusion pressure, very high vacuum, and then an aspiration flow rate that's high as well. High vacuum to grab, strip, and aspirate the cortex. Keep in mind that port is small and that may limit the flow. Capsule polish mode is to use low vacuum to remove small bits of lens material which are adherent to the posterior capsule. Low infusion pressure, low vacuum, low flow. We wanna be careful and not damage the posterior capsule. Just aspirate off little bits that are stuck to it. And finally, viscoelastic remove, removal mode. We wanna use high vacuum and high flow to really wash out all that viscoelastic in the case. So high infusion pressure, very high vacuum, very high flow, and important, especially to remove these dispersive agents. So you need the high flow and high vacuum there. So I hope you've enjoyed this series and there'll be more to come. Thank you for watching.